New tonight, a plan to take down Trump care. It's only been a day since the House bill to replace Obamacare passed, but already the New York Attorney General is threatening a lawsuit against the president's bill. Out front tonight, New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman. Attorney General, unconstitutional? Uh, if the bill's passed in its present form, yes. I hope the Senate will stop it. It's bad public policy. It doesn't protect people with pre-existing conditions. It'll cost millions of people health care. But if they pass the bill in the form the House passed it, it is unconstitutional. It, it includes an unconstitutional attack on women's right to reproductive health services, including abortion. Uh, it's drafted in a way that really, uh, in a tr tricky way, tries to wipe out Planned Parenthood. It, it goes after prohibited states funding prohibited entities with federal Medicaid hmm. funds, but prohibited entities defined in a way that the only thing in the country that qualifies is Planned Parenthood. So it's an effort to kill off Planned Parenthood, which would impose an undue burden on women's constitutionally protected rights to abortion. Because, of course, abortion. currently, according to the Supreme Court, it is still the law of the land. It, it is still a constitutional right. And it would also say that you can't be a qualified health plan if you provided certain constitutionally protected abortion services. If you can't be a qualified health plan, you're off the health care exchanges. You can't qualify for subsidies. So all of this offends the Constitution in two ways. You can't impose an undue burden on a constitutionally protected right. And clearly, there are areas of the country where the only provider is Planned Parenthood. And this would impose an undue hmm. burden on, on women in that area. And you can't impose unconstitutional conditions on a state. You can't require a state to uh, stop funding uh, the breast cancer screenings because they also fund a constitutionally protected right with separate funds. Federal funds aren't used for abortions now. This is an effort to cut off funding for breast cancer screenings, education on sexually transmitted disease, it imposes and an undue burden on women's constitutional rights. Now, though this is not the law of the land, right? This just went through the House. It could change dramatically in the Senate. Correct. You are not filing this lawsuit, right? You're not going to no. go ahead and file it until we are We are beseeching the, the Senate to make sure this never becomes the law of the land. It's, it's also unconstitutional in that it, would, uh, it has a provision that's targeted directly at New York State to intervene improperly because the federal government has no interest in intervening in the sovereign interest of a state in how we provide our Medicaid funding for uh, uh, for health care, that we now divide the funding between the state government and local governments. There is no legitimate federal interest in interfering with that. That's just an effort by some New York congressmen. They wanted this in return for their votes. It's, it's really a cynical ploy, and it's unconstitutional in both those respects. But as you say, I hope it'll never become law. I hope we'll be able to save a lot of uh, time and trouble and not have to bring this litigation. So you're also moving uh, perhaps to force President Trump to release his taxes. The New York Democrats have introduced legislation, right? This legislation, as far as I understand it, would require elected officials in the state to release their tax returns, which would theoretically apply to President Trump? Yeah, well, it would, it would apply to a lot of us. It would apply to me. Right. And we release now, I know you've released some of your taxes, We, we release obviously, our so. tax returns already. We've been relying on convention for people to release their tax returns. Obviously, that's not working anymore. If we have to require it by statute, I think that's something that the overwhelming majority of the American people would support. People want to know what conflicts uh, candidates for high Could office Could you really have. do that, though? Because I guess the question is, with, you can't constitutionally target it at just him. And if you make it so every elected official has to do it, a lot of them aren't going to want to do it either. It may not yeah. even pass in that regard. No, or you I, think you can get this through? I think, I think so. I think most of us in public life have accepted the fact that in today's world, transparency is important. I support transparency. And people release their tax returns voluntarily all the time, really down to a, a fairly low. So you think you can get a bipartisan agreement and push this bill through I, and force him to release his New York state returns? I, th I think that's something that's possible. Obviously, I favor disclosure. The best way to do it is to voluntarily disclose. But this is the kind of thing that happens when, look, the failure to divest and failure to disclose is going to be a problem for this president as long as he keeps this up. People are concerned about conflicts. Other things that have the appearance of impropriety will come up. So I think sooner or later this is going to come to a head. Do you think there's some smoking gun in there? I, I don't know about a smoking gun, but I think that I think that you, you've got to disclose your interests. You got to. You can't start amending the tax laws without people knowing what, how it'll affect your taxes. It's just not something that's going to uh, pass with the American people. Right, Attorney General Schneiderman. Thank you so much for your time. Good to thank see you. Thank you.